Unlike manufacturing companies a hundred years ago, nowadays manufacturers compete not only with other local businesses, but also with other operations across the globe, both big and small. And since you turned in for this talk, I suppose that you know very well the challenging environment that I'm talking about. Hi, my name is Milana and I'm an MRP expert here at Udu. In today's talk, I'd like to show you a couple of new features in the production planning that we have come up with in order to help you with the planning of your manufacturing process. Now, before I do that, I'd like to take a look at the importance of production planning, some common mistakes that companies often make, as well as the tools that you can use, well, more specifically, the tool that we use here in Udu, in order to help you with the planning. Now, generally speaking, a well-constructed production plan can help you boost your revenue, your profit and your customer satisfaction. While a poorly designed plan can cause production problems and perhaps even sink a company, which clearly we don't want. Now, specific benefits of production planning include, first of all, knowledge. A production plan provides a framework for understanding the resources and the different production steps that are required to meet your customer's need. It also helps companies understand the potential problems that might occur during production and how you can mitigate them. And I'll come back to this point in a little bit. The second one is efficiency. Detailed production planning reduces bottlenecks and this helps minimizing cost. It also helps ensuring a high quality of a product and it keeps your expenses on budget, which let's be honest, is always important. And last not least is customer satisfaction. Production planning helps ensure that your company can make and deliver products of high quality on time, leading to a higher customer satisfaction and a greater likelihood that your customer will come back and repurchase the goods. Now, like I mentioned just before, anticipating problems ahead of time is crucial. If the past couple of years have taught us something with the global pandemics that are happening, political situations that change overnight, it's that we have to be able to adapt the, to these changes very fast because they have grave implications on the logistics and manufacturing processes. So being aware of potential pitfalls is crucial, okay? So um, not anticipating hiccups ahead of time can result in major problems. So production planning should therefore always include risks management strategies and include different backup plans so that your company in events of problems occurring can have a backup plan to fall back on. Now, failing to do so can result in serious problems. For example, if a machine breaks on the line and you didn't budget for repairs and the workforce over time, the issue may strain the company's financial resources. Now, the second one is keeping your distance. Production management softwares, such as Odoo, can provide real-time visibility into a company's production status. Now, it's important, however, to plan not only from behind your computer, but also supplement, supplement that information with in-person visits to the production lines. Now, those visits, they can give you insights that you might not gain if you're just stuck behind the desk, okay? Now, the third mistake is failing to maintain equipment. I don't know if you know, but um, there is a tradition in American football that the quarterback buys presents for his offensive lineman at the end of every season. Do you know why? Well, it's because they protect him and they enable him to do his job. So your manufacturing equipment is your company's offensive line. So don't neglect it. Take care of it. Because Tracking usage and paying for regular preventive maintenance helps to ensure that your machines can keep your business functioning nonstop. And that is what we want at the end of the day, right? Now, what are the main steps in the production planning? So we've taken a look at the importance, some mistakes. Now, what are the actual steps? So first step is preparing for your planning. 
next, you define the, logic, the logical routes for your production run. And the next step is determining the schedule and deciding exactly when each part of the production will take place. Now, a schedule is crucial for any plan. And it's this aspect that I would like to show you in Odoo. Okay, now when it comes to production planning tools, businesses rely on a variety of tools to build production plans and track progress, ranging from visualization to sophisticated, to sophisticated softwares that can show you all the different steps that you need to take, when they have to happen, and so forth. Now, Udo automates a lot of the planning steps for you. And one of the powerful tools that we use is the Gen chart, which is a detailed visual timeline of all the different tasks scheduled for a particular job. Your production planning involves coordinating, scheduling many, many tasks, and this Gen chart visually represents when each task will take place and how long it will take. Now, since this is such a useful and powerful tool, that's the reason why we try to optimize it to the best we of our ability for you. So hopefully these little changes will make your production planning a little bit more easy. But as we all know, planning is never easy, but all the bits can help, right? So let's take a look at the new features in Odoo. Here I have a database. So if I go to my manufacturing and I go to my configurations, I have the uh, configuration to use work orders. Now, from now on, you will be able to not only use work orders, but also actually work with work order dependencies. Isn't that great? Let's take a look what that means. So once you have activated the setting, you can go to your bill of material and by the way, I manufacture luxury candles, okay? So here I have a bill of material for a candle. Um, I have a couple of operations that I have already added. And if I go to the miscellaneous tab, I see that I have the option now to decide bomb bon by bomb bon whether or not I want interdependency between the operations that are linked to my bill of material. So in my case, I do. What does that mean? If I go and edit, and I open one of my operation types, I can see that now I have here an additional line, which is the blocked by. And if I click on it, since I have another operation type already added, I can just select it and block my operation type of assembling, basically saying that I cannot start assembling unless this work order that it's blocked by is fulfilled. And you can add several ones, okay? You are not limited to just one. And like I said, if you have already an operation type added to the bill of material, you can just add it from here, or you can actually just create one. For, for me, I cannot start assembling unless I have melted my, wa my wax, so let's do that. We will create a new operation type, melting wax. So I can create an edit. I can add here a work center and same thing. I can make sure that my uh, operation type, if I want to, can be blocked. And again, the two operation types that are already added, I can select, but in my case, that's the operation type I would start with. So I save and I close, I save and I save again. And then we see that my operation type has been added to my bill of material. Okay, now how would this actually look if I create a manufacturing order and I plan it? So if I want to produce uh, a candle, let's say I want to produce five of them. And let's say that I want to schedule it on a Saturday. All right, I save, I confirm, and I plan. Let's take a look at my planning. What do I see? Even though I tried to schedule it for a Saturday, it automatically replanned for my first work order to start on a Monday. Now, how come? Let's take a look at our work centers. An amazing tool that we have is that you can define by work order your working hours. And in my case, I have a standard 40 hour week. And like you can see here, I can define the different days on which I actually manufacture my um, 
and I can actually produce goods. And like you see, I only work on uh, weekdays. I don't work on weekends, which means that even though I plan something, I schedule for a weekend, my uh, my system will automatically reschedule to the next working day that um, the company is actually open. So that is already one tool that, uh, that can help you. And if we go back to our planning, we see now that not only I have three different operation types, I have now dependencies that are indicated by these lines, which means like I said, being able to adapt is crucial. So if something were to happen and for some reason I want to reschedule one of my operation types, let's say my first one, and I say I actually don't, I cannot manufacture this on uh, the 19th, I can only do so the 22nd. What happens is that my line that indicates this relationship automatically became red. It means that there is a conflict in my planning. Now let me show you the amazing feature that is available from now on. Since we have these different operation types that are linked, and if I click on it, I see that my first operation type is ready to be manufactured. However, since there is a dependency between these two, I see that my uh, second operation type has the status waiting for another work order. Not only that, I see that here there is a conflict. And if you click on it, it will actually tell you that the scheduling has a conflict. And I can replan from here which will tell you that, okay, you have to adjust your planned date. Or if I go back, and like you see here, I also have a red square that indicates my um, conflict. What you can do from now on is actually by standing and hovering over this red line that shows our dependency, I can just click on one of the arrows and it will automatically reschedule all the operation types in order for you to make sure that the planning is correct. So if I show you again, oops, let's say I wanna replan, and I actually wanna plan everything to the future, you see that my planning automatically will change. So if I click here, and let's say I will now up, try and drag and drop, like this, again, I see that there is a conflict here. So if I click, automatically all the, all the work orders are rescheduled for you. Now, isn't this amazing? You no longer have to mit, mix and match and make sure that everything is done correctly. The system does it all for you. Now, another interesting feature is here. It shows you the capacity of your work orders in terms of time. So here I see that I have 13 hours um, that are booked from the 120. Why 120? Because my view is set on month. If I will change to week, I will see that my working capacity changes to 40 hours. And where does the 40 hours come from? Again, from the working hours that are defined on my workstations, okay? So that way you have a good view on what the capacities are of your different workstations. All right, let's take a look at what else we have for you. Like I said, we manufacture candles. And let's say that um, I would like to make another batch uh, of 10 candles. But this one I would like to manufacture the 26th. Okay, I save, I confirm, I already plan it. But next to single candles, I actually also produce candle sets. And if we take a look, uh, let's say of these, I want to manufacture also five. They actually have the same components as my previous um, work order, uh, sorry, production order manufacturing order. Um, but the only difference is the quantities that are being used because obviously this is a set and the other one was just a single candle. But the products are all the same. So let's say that I save this, I confirm and I plan. Now, coming back to adaptability and being able to change. What you, from now on you can do is actually split and merge different manufacturing orders. You can, you can merge them from this view 
by selecting the different production orders you would like to merge. You can go to action and merge them or split them from here. And let's try to do so for the three production orders that we have and see what it gives us. And we see an error message that tells us that the, in order to be able to merge your production orders, you have to make sure that the bills of materials are identical. And even though I've shown you that the components are the same, the quantities are different. So it will not allow you to, to merge the different bills of material. But what you could do is merge the exact same uh, production orders. In my case, let's say I have one that is scheduled for eight days, the other one in 14. And today, like in eight days, I know that actually I didn't plan on, but I have a production line that is now available and before it wasn't. So it allows me to actually produce more on the same day rather than splitting it up in two different days. So what can I do? Easily adapt my planning. I just select my two production orders, click on action and I merge them. We see that automatically a new work uh, manufacturing order is created. Again, you, we are able to adjust our scheduled dates. We can save, mark, oh, plan it. And if we come back, you see that on your source column, it tells you which two manufacturing orders have been merged into a new one. All right, isn't this great? Let's say that I thought that my production line would be available, but then my colleague called me and said, unfortunately, it was a misinformation. We already planned another uh, activity on the line. Again, no problem. I can adapt easily because I do my menu, I do my production planning very well. So what I can do is actually go back and say that, no, I want to split this production order again. You can select in how many production orders you want to split it. Okay, like this. Oh, sorry, I was a bit too fast. Like that. I can split it into two. And from this view, you can directly say for which days you would like to make the splits. So let's say, for example, this one I would like to do, like I said before, the 26th. And voila, I can split. And again, from this manufacturing order, I now have two back orders that are created. And if I go to my main view, again, I still see the dependency between the different uh, manufacturing orders and where they came from. So this way you maintain your overview of your planning and the, and the changes that you have made. So this was it. I hope these little changes will make your life a little bit easier because I know that production planning, it's not the easiest thing, but we can always try and make it a little better for you. Thank you for, for joining me and have a very lovely day.